Hi, I'm Lawson with AM Performance Electronics, and I'm here with Jason. We're going to show you our new 8-channel K-Type EGT CAN module. Our new 8-channel K-Type EGT CAN module allows you to read and record temperatures, transmit those temperatures via a one-plug AEM net CAN bus connection. Our K-Type EGT CAN module is highly accurate as well, thanks to its onboard cold junction compensation sensor. What that allows is 1% of accuracy full scale from negative 328 degrees to 2,501 degrees Fahrenheit. By default, the 8-channel K-Type EGT CAN module transmits via AEM net CAN bus, which means that it's immediately configurable. You can pull it out of the box and use it for our Infinity ECU Series 3, Series 7, or Series 5, or our CD5 carbon or CD7 carbon digital dashes with logging. However, if you have a non-AEM logging device that has configurable CAN, you can configure the CAN bus input on these units to work with your device. What's even cooler is if you need to record more than eight temperature channels, you can daisy chain two of these modules together and bring in 16 temp channels to your logging device via a one plug CAN bus connection. We sell the A-channel K-Type EGT CAN module separately. We include some Velcro for you to mount it. The K-Type thermocouple sensors are sold individually and they're sold as singles and in two and four packs to easily configure for your four cylinder V6 or V8 application. Our K-Type sensor kits include, of course, a miniature K-Type thermocouple sensor, plenty of wire for you to custom trim it to your specific application, some heat shielding, nut bolt, and it includes the connector that allows you to connect it to your K-Type EGT CAN module. We call it the K-Type EGT CAM module because that's going to be the most common application. But you can use it to record all kinds of temperatures, things like cylinder head temps, pre and post intercooler temps, air temp, water temp, fluid temp, disc brake temps, and more. So there's a quick overview of our new K-Type EGT CAN module. I'm going to turn it over to Jason now so he can show you how to make an accurate connection from the module to your K-Type thermocouple amplifier. So now that Lawson's given a great overview of the product, let's go over the tools required to connect our sensor to our module. Uh, first thing we're going to need is a set of wire strippers, a 3 16 socket or box or open end wrench, a razor blade, a sharpie, some scissors, a number one Phillips head screwdriver, a lighter, and our sensor and associated components. So the first step in connecting our sensor to our EGT module is going to be uh, connecting our extension harness here that's supplied in our kits. Um, and the way we do this, we have ring terminals on either end of our sensor and extension harness. And we have a couple screws and nuts and some heat shrink that we're gonna put over the top of these after we've made our connection. So we're gonna unbundle our wiring harness here open this up, lay this out to the side. And first thing I like to do is verify our wire colors. On this particular harness, extension harness, our yellow is our positive, our red is our negative. On our current offering of thermocouple sensors, our red is our positive and our black is our negative. If you're using one of our older model sensors, uh, the wire colors are going to match. Our red is our negative and our yellow is our positive. Next step, we're gonna make sure that our lengths are appropriate for making our connections. Uh, in this case, our negative wire here is actually going to be a little bit too long. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little service loop into here to cut the length down without having to uh, recrimp the terminal or splice the wiring. So to do our service loop, it's just a quick the loop like this, and that just cuts our length down without having to do uh, any modification to the wiring itself. The next step is going to be slide a piece of our heat shrink over the longer wire here so that we have access to the ring terminal. We're going to use our screw and nut to connect our yellow to our red. We're going to tighten these down. And 
you want to make sure when you're doing this that your ring terminals are in line with one another to make installing the shrink easier. So we're going to slide our heat shrink tube over, ensuring that we're covering both ends of our ring terminals so we have no exposed metal. We're going to take our lighter and we're going to shrink this tubing down. And we're going to go ahead and repeat the same process on the other two wires here. Also want to be careful that you're keeping the lighter away from the other exposed wires so that we're not burning any of the insulation. And again, if you have a heat gun or hair dryer, you can use those as well uh, to shrink the shrink tubing. So now we've got our extension harness connected to our sensor. We're gonna move to the other end uh, and show you how to make the connection with our K-type thermal couple connector into our CAN EGT module. So now that we've made our connections on our extension harness, uh, the next step is going to be to determine how long our extension harness needs to be when routing it through the vehicle in order to mate to our CAN EGT module. Uh, one trick that I like to implement when doing this is I will take my thermocouple connector that mates to our EGT module and I'm going to actually plug this into our module and with our wiring I'm going to line this up with this break here on the connector and that's going to give us a good length uh, as far as how much wire we're going to need in order to properly insert this into this connector. So now that we've determined the proper length, uh, first thing we're going to need to do is actually take a razor blade and we're going to expose a little bit more of this wiring. Uh, we're going to be very careful here and make sure that we're cutting right down the center of this sheathing here as to not nick any of the wiring inside. And I don't like to cut all the way down. I like to score the surface and then use the wires themselves to actually create our split here. And we're just going to take some scissors here for the sake of time and cut the remainder of this sheathing off. Now we're going to go ahead and open up our K-type thermocouple connector and show you what's inside and how those connections need to be made. So we're going to unscrew our top panel here. So that's going to show two Phillips uh, screw clamps here and a rubber grommet. First thing you're going to want to do is take this grommet, slide it over our two wires here. This can be a little difficult uh, as the fit is a little bit tight, but it's designed that way so that we have no water intrusion into the connector. Okay. Now that we have our wires through, we're going to go ahead and slide this all the way down, get it out of the way. And we're going to want to strip about a quarter of an inch off of each of these wires uh, for inserting into our screw terminals here. I'm going to twist these up, make sure they're nice and tidy before putting these in. And remember again, our yellow is our positive, our red is our negative, and this is labeled on the connector here. Uh, it's embossed in the connector, so you have a plus and a minus. I'm going to go ahead and loosen these up. And what this is going to do is it, there is a sandwich plate here and it's gonna open this up and this is where you're gonna insert your wires. So we're gonna take our yellow. And I like to do these simultaneously, otherwise things can be a little bit uh, difficult trying to do them one by one. So we're gonna insert those all the way. And then we're gonna 
snug these up here. Okay, now we've got a nice taut connection. Now we're gonna take our grommet that we slid over these wires a little bit ago and we're gonna slide this up and there's a groove on the connector that this needs to line up with. Set that in. We're gonna take our cover, lay this back on and cinch these screws down. Okay, and now we're ready to install everything in the vehicle and plug it into our thermocouple module. And it's as simple as lining up your positive negative. And this can't be reversed. These terminals are actually different sizes, so you can't physically plug it in the wrong way. And one other last bit of uh, detail that I like to do when installing these is I like to take a Sharpie. And there's a little white paper pad on this connector. And I like to mark a number one on this connector so that I know that if I ever have to take this out or I have to pull the engine, I know exactly where these plug right back into the module and I don't have to uh, pull out my multimeter and try to figure out what goes where. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, put them in the comments below, give us a call, or shoot us an email at gentech at amelectronics.com. For more information on our products, visit aemelectronics.com and be sure and hit that like button for more information on AEM Performance Electronics.